Well, it does not seem odd at all. After the disciples have been following Jesus and watching him pray, in fact, he's just finished praying, and they've noticed um, his, his prayers have been answered in various ways, it does not seem odd at all that they ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. I have a feeling that perhaps what they were thinking was, teach us how to pray so that our prayers will be answered as well. After all, I think there's a lot of teaching that we've all probably heard that says that God desires to give us everything that we need. Translated, everything that we want and that we can never outgive God. And so all we have to do is ask. Now I have to say that um, if we spent the rest of the day into tomorrow and maybe even the rest of the week, we probably couldn't do justice to the topic of prayer. And so today, we're just going to look at one aspect in this prayer that Jesus talks about and teaches, and the story specifically that he tells, because what seems to be in that story is that our persistence will get us what is needed. It's kind of like the little one, right, who just keeps going, but I want it, I want it, I want it. I want it, I want it, I want it. You're gonna give it to me, right? I want it, I want it. Just until the parent says, fine, it's yours. And I'm not exactly sure that that's what Jesus intends when he tells that story. And I learned something this week that helps with that, but first I wanna give you an example. Doug and I were in a restaurant this week and as we almost always do before we eat, we hold hands and we give thanks for our food in prayer. Well, as we're eating away, someone comes by on their way out and says, I saw you praying. Are you a Christian? Yes. <laughs> Good, I am too. And I think in the way things are today that we should be on our knees all the time, all of us in prayer. Uh -huh. I just didn't take the time. I just didn't think it was appropriate place or time to go further into what it was that she was uh, hoping for because I figured my food would get cold and perhaps it would even spoil before we finished going over the topic adequately, just like I said a minute ago. But I do think that what she was doing was sort of talking about that idea of being persistent in prayer so that God will respond and God's will will be bent to ours. But what I learned this week is that the word that is translated in our reading as persistence has another meaning in Greek, and that is audacity. The, the confidence, the nerve, if you will, for the person to go to the door of a friend and knock at a late hour. The confidence and the belief that they will know them well enough because they know them to give them what it is that's needed. Maybe not what it is that they want, of what it is that's needed. The confidence, the audacity, the perseverance in that manner. And that changes for me the meaning of how prayer can be. Not so much a nagging until we get, but knowing the one that we pray to, whose name is hallowed, whose kingdom comes, Knowing God well enough and, and trusting that God knows us 
to give us the things that are needed. And honestly, I want to trust God to give me more of what I need than what I think I need. God knows my heart and my mind much better than I even do. And not only that, God knows the hearts and minds of those around me and around the world and sees a perspective that is hugely more immense than anything that I can perceive or answer. And so, there's that persistence or that audacity in prayer, trusting the one Trusting the one who answers when we knock, who is found when we search, and the Holy Spirit whose door gives us the Holy Spirit, whose door is always, always wide open.